AIG's outgoing CEO Ed Liddy told investors he's leaving the company in better shape than when he took over last September. He made the comments at the company's annual shareholder meeting here in New York. Bloomberg's Suzanne O'Halloran was there. She is here now. And that statement seems like a tough pill to swallow, Suzanne. Well, Mark, you know, he did acknowledge it has been a tough, rough year for the past uh, couple of months indeed for all AIG investors. And he also said AIG was brought to its knees and the stock, which is trading at a dollar and change, really tells the story. This time last year, it was trading in the $30 range. Now, Liddy tried to emphasize AIG is in the process of becoming a more stable company. Making that happen will fall to the new CEO, whoever that person is. The company is in the process of trying to find a replacement for Liddy, who resigned several weeks ago. Even though AIG has made progress under Liddy, investors, including this bondholder, are still a little bit concerned about the company's long-term survival. Yeah, I have confidence in the leadership. It's the finance is what the market will do. Basically, the investments, the toxic assets, will they recover, you know, and that's what the economy does. And as he mentioned, AIG is still exposed to risky investments like derivatives. Zara Burton, my colleague, has a full report, Mark, on the latest filing AIG filed with the SEC just last night about that very thing. And Suzanne, how much detail did Liddy give about future business conditions for the company? You know, he tried to give as much detail as possible in terms of what's ahead for AIG. He talked about how the company is rebranding the stronger units away from the AIG brand and divesting the weaker units. They've raised already about $6.7 billion through various deals. And, of course, they are cutting the firm's exposure to more risky, toxic assets like derivatives. And Liddy also said, Mark, there is an excellent chance for the company to repay the U.S. government. He didn't give a full timetable on that. And as you and I were talking, Liddy really came in uh, almost of his own goodwill to really help this company out. And he's leaving, uh, which was the plan, to go back into retirement. And he seems pretty confident that they're taking the right steps. Bloomberg, Suzanne O'Hara and Suzanne, thanks. And even before the meeting started this morning, AIG opened as the worst performing stock in the S&P 500, and it still is. As Suzanne mentions, Zara Burton's here with that side of the story. And Zara, the stock price has been a consistent worry for investors. Yeah, and Suzanne just mentioned that, of course, with the company on the brink of collapse last year, the stock still off 96% over the past 12 months, and now it got down to a low of 35 cents early this year. Now, $1.16, a profitable investment if you'd bought it at that low, but a lot of these investors did not. Their shares basically worth little or nothing right now, and of course they have questions. And even though Liddy said today that the company will have an excellent chance of repaying its federal aid, near term, very serious risks. Now, one of them is the derivatives business. This is the business that brought the company to its knees last year. And that's why you're seeing the stock sell off today, down about 13 percent. All along, basically, the company had come out and said, OK, we've underwritten about $200 billion worth of credit default swaps to European banks, which are essentially insurance contracts to protect against a company defaulting on its bonds. AIG said later yesterday now that the risk of losses from this particular business is going to last longer than expected and could have a material adverse effect on AIG's results. Now, investors are asking this, uh, themselves a the question, why wasn't this disclosed earlier? And so that's why you're seeing the stock sell off. It wasn't that they didn't know about it. It's that they didn't realize that it was a risk factor in AIG's results going forward. Matt, Bloomberg's uh, Zara Burton joining us from the newsroom. Zara, thanks.